まあアイリーン様ミルチェッタからお帰りになったんですねあなた試したわね私にゲームの知識があるかあなたと同じ前世の記憶があるかどうかを I love how both Claude and Eileen both EQs or <laughs> EQs both accuse each other of not fighting fair with Claude with his affection with Eileen with her like antics and the way that she kind of approaches Claude they both like kind of accuse each other of not playing fair and I absolutely love it I really just like I have been so enthralled in their relationship and although um Eileen continues to recruit others, you know, of the men variety into kind of like her peons and her, you know, and her kind of like underlings in a sense. She also gained Rachel this episode too, which was a big boon for her. Uh, you know, Claude is not worried in the slightest. He even referred to even all of them, even James, the other protagonist. He refers to all of them. He's like, oh, Eileen, I see you've gotten some pets. And I was like, yo, that's my boy. That's my boy Claude. So confident of like, oh, I see you got some pets. No, not even worried for like a second. I was like, yeah, that's the way you had. That's the top G right there. Uh, so overall, like this episode was absolutely fantastic. I think it was it was amazing. I think kind of like the most notable thing that we have to talk off, like that we need to talk about, like off jump, is the fact that uh, Eileen called out Lilia. Right? Is it Lilia? That's her name, right? Yeah, Lilia. Uh, that he, she called out Lilia for being another player, which you know we kind of had assumed before because you know when when she was deemed the holy maiden, right? She was able to go in and um, recruit Cedric, which was like kind of like the main the main person of the game, and she was kind of like the original protagonist of of the game as well. And the thing that kind of gave her away was she also began to kind of like semi-pursue uh, Claude as well. And that was kind of like the first telling thing of her, you know, kind of going after it. And then her knowing when she was going to attack, you know, when the demons did like their attack and everything. And then kind of turning the tables on Eileen and then still being able to transform Claude, right? She just kind of like, she was too smart about things. And Eileen, you know, this whole time kind of, you know, before this moment that she put it together officially, she kind of just simply summed it up as, oh, you know, it's because I have been directly affecting this world that it's kind of like reciprocating that back. It's kind of like a, it's like a, a cause and effect, it's like a butterfly effect. It's because I've been changing the way things are supposed to go scripted wise. Things are changing. So she kind of just summed it up as, oh, well, because I, I intervened, then, you know, the story of how th how things are supposed to go, they changed on me, which totally makes sense. You know, if I was in her shoes, too, I'd be like, oh, well, if I went and grabbed this and now I put it over here when it was supposed to be over there, well, then now there's a chance that when I come back, it's no longer there because someone else moved it. Although if I never touched it, it would still be there kind of thing. So I, in that sense, you know, it kind of totally makes sense to me and it made sense to her too. But now I love how everything kind of was too, too, too specific this episode when we had the whole entire um, white lily ball and everything. And when Selena or Selena, Selena, whatever, she was acting on orders, you know, she was like, oh, this isn't what I was told. I got an I got a order. I got a, a letter and I, I followed the letter to the T. August was supposed to have the holy sword, blah, 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 blah. James was supposed to be this. You guys are supposed to be going against James. Basically, she was given the outline of how the official game story is supposed to go. And Eileen this whole time was like, what the hell does that mean? She's like, well, the only one that she's been in contact with has been the holy sword maiden, which is Lilia. So she has to be the person. So then she goes and confronts her. She was like when did you regain your memories beach and she was like oh since you met cedric originally i was like god damn this is a long time and what's worse about that is lilia's been sucking ass at the game because eileen's been just like bossing boss chick status all over she's been stomping her ass everywhere so um you know i verbally did yell out too i was like kill her you know like right then and there it's kind of one of those moments where you know this person's gonna affect your whole entire life forever now like this is this is their world now you're this 20 year old girl whatever you have your whole life ahead of you now and this 
one person is going to continue to be bitter, going to continue to be a, you know, villainous, going to continue to be your antagonist, going to continue to antagonize you. Like, I, this was one of those moments where, like, oh, you think this is a game? You know what I mean? Uh, at least disable her or something, but, like, you know, kind of, like, check her, you know what I mean? Uh, and she did nothing of the sorts, which I think Eileen could have definitely done as well. So, uh, very, you know, just all extremely interesting. Now, the rest of the episode, obviously, you know, we had the... Um, we had Eileen, and I, I had to make a note of this because I loved how this episode had Eileen being a woman pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman. <laughs> I thought that was the, the funniest thing, and then she made all the guys kind of feel weird inside. They're like, I don't know. I am attracted to her, but I don't know if I should be. Uh, it's weird. It, I thought that was hella hilarious. Uh, she ended up winning the um, she ended up winning the lily ball, which was really cool. Um, I, I wrote down how the F does she keep growing her hair back. She cut it off, grew it back, grew back again. Is it magic? It was never explained. We just kind of have to roll with it. Um, we saw that Claude had called her out, you know, for like, what the hell was she doing? Claude got mad, froze the school, ended up forgiving her nonetheless. So everything ended up kind of working out, you know, when everything was all said and done. Uh, I love how Eileen is very uh, set, dead set on the fact that she's going to be the Demon King's wife. I find like that's that's very, very cute. I like how she brought the duck outfit to kind of like soothe Claude's um, anger, but didn't work. Uh, and then I like Isaac and uh, Rachel's kind of future relationship uh, with each other as well. And then obviously everything worked out for James and the group. They all got jobs. James is going to work for the Demon King. August is going to be her knight. Rachel is going to be her aide. And then the other two guys are going to just work for her as well. She's going to steal them from the church. Uh, and they have no choice or say in any of it. So she gained like a whole slew and crew of people to push their agenda to kind of bridge the gap between demons and humans. So fantastic episode. Uh, I laughed. I giggled. Uh, I, I I got angry. I screamed. It was all great. So let me know what you guys thought of this episode down in the comments below. As always, my friend, are you the villainous or are you the hero? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next Saturday. Peace.